Hi everybody, welcome back to Garage Studio Modelers. Um, I'm Dave Forrest, I'm here with my good friend Harvey Lowe, and uh, we're, um, we're going to do another episode on the BT-7 here. So since the last time we got together, um, a lot of things have happened, uh, made some good progress. Uh, finished doing the uh, painting and modulation of the, uh, of the main chassis. Uh, last time we got together it was just the, the turret that we did on film in terms of the modulation. And then on the turret itself, you can see here that I've put the decals on. And what I use for uh, what I use for decals, I have a slightly different approach to uh, to what Harvey did on the Millennium Falcon. Is I like to use when I put my gloss coat down, I like to use the Model Master Acryl gloss. And the reason for that is that I find, and I've mentioned this before, is that I find that when you put it on, it doesn't alter the underlying color at all. Um, I've had experiences with uh, future. I haven't tried the new Pledge formula yet, so I, I might want to. I might want to try that. But in the past, I've had issues with uh, other gloss uh, mediums mm. darkening the other the, mm -hmm. the coat underneath. And then when you put a, uh, when you incorporate it back and you put a flat coat on, it's a slightly different tone. Uh, and and you put me onto this hard actually. So I use this uh, religiously for all of my armor um, decal needs. I, I don't I'm not sure what I would use for aircraft once I start doing that. Um, but this I find works really well. And then I'll also I'll put a gloss coat down. I use the Echelon uh, decal set. This is a, a BT7 set uh, that they have. And now, to be fair, these these decals aren't uh, the same or aren't really made for this particular variant. Mm. Of uh, but I like the I like the the number in the red star. I thought the red star was nice. Yeah, I, I noticed that was inaccurate. But I, but by the time you put it on, I, I didn't want to. You didn't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. Well, I appreciate that. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good guy here. Uh, and then what I do is I, I work to, I put another gloss coat on once the, the, the decal is set. And I use the same solutions that uh, Harvey used. And the nice thing about the Echelon decals is they're very thin. Uh, they go down real nice and they don't take a lot of setting solutions. So you can get away with using the micro scale, uh, micro sol and micro set or micro set and micro sol. Um, uh, and that's what I do. And, and they're on a pretty flat surface. So there's not, there's no relief to, to worry about here. And then there's another one just sort of on the front of the chassis here. No, Dave. I've never used. I've actually never used these. You, you've put me onto these, and you you thin these with what? Yeah. So th this is what I use for after I put a, a final mm. gloss coat over the decal. I'll work the finish back in using a mix of uh, this is the flat from uh, Mr. Color. This is the UV cut, and I and this is uh, something I recently found, and this this is amazing. This is really. Uh, a good flat solution mm. that you can use uh, and I thin it with Mr. or with the low length thinner and I also cut it a little bit with the Tamiya semi gloss and and the reason I do that is uh, I use one part um, uh, one part flat one part semi gloss they get kind of an eggshell finish which is what, I, what I'm looking for um, and I thin this with the uh, Mr. Color uh, leveling thinner. That's that's my. Is that stuff. this stuff? I just went to my box. Yeah, it's this stuff here. Right. So I'll, I'll I'll thin with this. This is gold, right? This is it stinks, but it does a really good job, and it and it'll also work on the uh, the Vallejo paints as well. Have you ever used the Mister Color thinner? Do you know the difference between the two? This has a retarder in it, mm. right? So that's why it gives it the leveling. This doesn't. Mm. So this is good for cleaning your brush. Like I, I'll use it for cleaning. I'll use it for uh, maybe maybe something, but if I want a nice finish and I want a nice, uh, you know, good level finish, this stuff that, that's the goal. Yeah. Now, there's no concern of you mixing this with these. No. And then, but this goes on before because that's acrylic. That's right? acrylic. So, you, so you, you would I would thin this with their specific, their specific thinner, specific thinner, not right, that's water, what I but do, their right. specific thinner. Um, and then I and then I let that dry, like over at least a good 24 hours, and then I'll mix. And you can mix these two because they're both. Um, they're both lacquer based, so you can mix these two together with the with the leveling thinner, and it just goes on. So, so really, you, you've heard in the past where some guys say, "Don't put lacquers over acrylics." You can, as long as it's dry. Right? I I have I yeah. haven't had an issue with it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm only doing small areas, yeah. like I'm not coating a whole model. Mm. Um, I don't, you know, I I've, I'm I'm of the belief that less product is like if you don't have to coat the whole yeah. model, don't. Mm. I, again, it might be different for aircraft. Uh, I'll have to see when I get it. Oh, by, by the way, quick note when I'm looking at these jars, some of the guys tell me what's like. It, let's say that this was leveling thinner too. They have different numbers. You, you you guys know what the difference is? It's really, it's the size of the bottle. 
it's not a different... Oh, it's a 250 milliliter, it's a 400 milliliter? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, no, yeah. Go. Some guys think, is it a different with a 400? No, no, it's just the size of the bottle. I just, there you go. There you go. Yeah, you learn something new every day. Right. So that's the, uh, the turret. I've also applied a wash to this side, um, but not this side. So we'll do this on camera shortly. And then in terms of the, uh, the chassis, I've done, uh, I've applied some mud. Oh, so I, I like to use, great. I like to use the uh, dark earth. Uh, you can use anything, uh, really. Uh, and this is a, a water-based uh, uh, acrylic medium, uh, textured medium. And I use that just to create a base for the pigments to go on to. Um, ah, so this goes first. This, this goes first. Uh, so I'll apply the mud on, and I've done it underneath, and I've applied some, some pigments. So I've done this section here. And then we'll do, so this section isn't touched, so we'll do this on camera again. So I'll apply the mud on camera, uh, and then we'll switch over to the other side, and we'll do a little bit of the pigments. Uh, and I've also done some of the road wheels as well. So I've got uh, this guy here, uh, which is the rear idler. Uh, so I've got the uh, so I put a little bit of mud on that. I put some pigments and then I put some some grease and oil stains uh, on it as well. So that one's done. So we can do maybe uh, one of those on on camera. Oh, one thing I did meant I forgot to mention is I did put a filter on. So again, I'm a big believer in putting filters to alter the tone, especially on a, on a monotone uh, or single color uh, camouflage. And I like to make my own filters. Um, I find that, you, I mean, you can buy the, the filters pre-made, mm -hmm. but I find sometimes if, if you know, the, the staying power, that there's a shelf life and they kind of ball up. And, right. Um, so I like to make my own from, from oil paints. Um, so I use three colors. So I used uh, like a green, and this is an olive green from, uh, and again, I always use the Aptalung 502 paints. They're, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, German ochre, um, and this is uh, field gray. Now, why did you choose these tones and colors? Just just pick three. So, but you wouldn't, uh, would you apply, let's say, a blue filter? You could. Mm. You could. I, I just tried to stay within the green. Mm. And then, and because when I painted this, it was fairly, um, fairly, fairly, cut, like it was very bright. Right. And, right. and I, I wanted to pick some filters that would maybe knock the color right. down a bit. Right. Um, if I wanted to bring the color up, I might use, like, I'm, I'd use like a pure yellow. Right or like a like a uh, a buff filter, but you're keeping it within the range of the greens. You, you right. can you can yeah. get like in the past I've you know I've, I've put like a like a pink filter mm -hmm. on, on an olive green and okay. you know just to experiment with that. But it's looking great. But uh, yeah, and I've got some washes. Um, so again, we'll we'll do some washes and whatnot. But you can see that the again, this is my favorite part of doing the model where it starts to really come to life with the with the. How, the how long did it take? for your modulation from start to finish on this model. How long did it take you to do that? Uh, maybe maybe 90 minutes. Oh, wow. I mean, right. They're just, you know, mixing the different colors and letting it dry and painting it. Like, I, I find it, once you get the hang of it, mm. it, goes, it goes pretty quick. Pretty quick? Yeah. Looks great. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll... Uh, We'll uh, we'll get going. We'll we'll do some uh, we'll do some close in work. Um, I've got my my pigments mixed up here, and again, I use I like to use three. So I use uh, these are all from the Mig range. Uh, I use dark earth, uh, light dust, and uh, airfield dust. Airfield dust is, is a real nice uh, is a real nice tone to it. Um, so I mix I'll mix a bunch up and I'll keep them in a shot glass here, and that's what I use to. Uh, for, well, for you know what I'd suggest, Dave? You've got so much dust in this garage, you could probably use dust in this garage to enhance the I don't know. I think it's pretty clean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I don't pretty know. Clean. I, I don't it's, agree with it's you a nice there. garage. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll start getting into it. We'll start doing some, uh, we'll do wash, we'll start with washes uh, on the turret, and then we'll move to doing mud on the on the chassis itself. Looking great, Dave. Thanks, Art. Okay, so we're going to start with the, uh, applying the, the wash to the rest of the turret here. Uh, so what I'm using is I'm using this dark wash um, from AK. Again, any any dark brown wash color will do. So what I do is I put a little bit on my palette, and then I have a little uh, bit of thinner here just to thin it down a bit and help it flow. You could make your own from oils, but you know these are just convenient. And then what I'll do is I'll just touch, I'll get around this bolt de detail here, and it goes on pretty thick. To start, but then again, we can kind of clean that up after the fact. Dave, are you applying that wash over a gloss, semi-gloss, or matte finish? It's the kind of the eggshell matte mm. finish. I never, again, if I don't have to put a coat on the model, I, I, I don't. Less product, the better. Are you going in the crevices now? Yeah, I just go around some of the bolt detail. 
like the nice thing about this uh, this particular variant is that with the hatches and the periscopes that I got from the Hussar set, there's a lot of detail. Like there's a lot of interesting detail here, just begging for. And that's pretty well out of the box, is that right, Dave? What's that? The out of box, this kit? No, no, I use that uh, Hussar. Oh yes, resin, right, the turret, the, the turret top. Turret. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the hull is out of box, pretty much. The hull, yeah, except with the, the exception of the rear screen, which is the the Aber set. They give you a nice rear screen in the um, in the kit, but it's that it's that nickel that they use, and it's pretty thick and springy. Now I'm just playing a water. So this is the weld detail that we added in the in the second episode. And again, it goes on. You know, don't like if it. You can see here where it's pulled up. Don't worry about that because you can come back and clean that up after and let it dry. Uh, you'll let it dry a bit and come back with like a clean brush and yeah, things. yeah, just kind of neaten it up. Just adding, just finding, just picking out the detail. And again, it is, with all the hatch detail you have on this, there's just just lends itself nicely to a nice wash. Looks like you could probably do that uh, easily within an evening uh, sitting. Yeah. Oh, this is the this is this is the best part. So I love this part. Of the... yeah, you can see the difference already, just with. Like how that, that all the you know you get the wash into the nooks and crannies of the hatch detail here, and it just starts to pop. And your mix is just by eye, right? There's no fixed uh, uh, ratio. You're just dabbing the thinner and then the yeah. mm, the wash. And the reason is because I know, like this is a little bit thick. Uh, I know I'm going to come back and clean it up with a clean brush after. So I just start, just touch, and it just flow even on a on a flat surface it'll it'll flow and there's a lot of there's a lot again even with the mantlet here there's a lot of detail to get after this is just a nice I mean if you could build this you could build this out of the box I just used the set because I had it But you could build a very. And this is a beautiful kit out of the box. If you're if you're looking for one of those clean builds or an easy build after a tough, demanding, or if you're bogged down, this is a great option. For as a bit of a palate cleanser. So I'll go in pretty heavy with this bolt detail here on the mantlet, and we'll come back and clean that up. How long will you let it dry for before you come back and clean it up? Oh, 10 15 minutes. Mm. On the rear hatch here. And there's like the nice, this is, like, this is a resin piece here. So there's some nice weld detail. So we'll just go in and just, and again, come back and clean that up after the fact. It's not a problem. Back here, add a little bit more detail. So these ones I did before, but I'm gonna go back and redo them. Uh, and then some of the detail in here on the periscope. So these, so I'll paint this a different color, and then we'll put a nice little gloss bit there for the uh, for the lens. And then on the side here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little different. There's a little kind of like a reinforcing band on the side here. So I'm going to, instead of doing a wash in here, I'm going to, I'm going to put some oil paint in there direct. So let me just clean this. Now I'll use, I'll use these oil brusher paints. Again, these are really convenient to use. But what I'll do is I'll just pull paint off of the with a thinner brush. I'm gonna put that over here. 
And then I'll just kind of trace the outline of this reinforcing band. Now you're using the paint right out of the oil brush or product, unthinned, is that Correct, right? yeah. And as you can see, I'm putting it on pretty sloppy. But the reason for that is because I'm going to come in and clean it up after the fact. That's, that's a little bit thicker. But again, we'll come back and clean that up. So we'll let that sit for a bit. And then maybe, so we'll put that aside and I'll start doing some washes on the... Now let's experiment live here. Let's take some of this stuff. And just thin that down and see what that does for a wash. By the way, Dave, when you said, let's try this, um, I don't know if our viewers know this. Uh, when when Dave and I do these, we we don't do a lot of takes, do we? Retakes. No. We just do no. it, and I think it's 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 good to be uh, just do things on the camera and uh, just yeah, see you, how it goes. Yeah, yeah. You try something out. Yeah. So in other words, we're not scripting these techniques, right? Let's try it. Yeah, we'll see what see what this is, what this does as a wash. Again, like I said, you can you can use stuff out of the bottle, um, or you can make your own from oil. So we'll do. That looks pretty nice. So just you're just going through and you're just picking out bolt detail. There's a lot of bolt detail to pick out. Like you know, these these little access panels are going to get some attention after. In terms of added weathering. Again, if it goes on a little bit thick, which this is, thin it down a little bit more. But you can again, you're going to come back and clean it up after the fact. You can probably come back and clean up this garage too while you're at it, Dave. Oh, it's getting no respect. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. <laughs> now you see, there's a there's, there's there's a light that goes back here that's missing, or not missing, but I, I left it off on purpose. I'm going to paint it separately and then put it back in, so that's why you see that access that little hole there. And then these things are where the spare tracks will go. Again, I left them off so I could weather them separately. Paint them with them separately. Now again, Dave, you're only going into the recesses and details, right? You're, you're. I noticed that you, when you apply this to the to, to the decals, you're doing some downstroking. Is that where you want to get a little bit of uh, weathering as well? Yeah, like a little bit of streaking. Yeah. Streaking, yeah. yes, yeah. as well as a wash in the crevices. You, yeah. You're kind of combining different different. Effects. Yeah, you can, like like there's extra, like there's a lot of wash on these bolts here, mm -hmm. and when you're cleaning it up, you can yeah. actually you can incorporate a streak into it. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm quite a fan of this thinned mm. oil brusher as a wash. Let's do some... So again, you're just kind of touching... And you're just kind of letting... Like you see here, there's a nice kind of long panel line. Put these little fuel, these square fuel tanks that are on the top. So just grabbing some more oil paint. And again, you know, like these these little fuel filler caps here are going to get some attention after the fact. Dave, what's your thoughts on, uh, th these are these are enamel oil-based washes, what's your, what's your thoughts on acrylic wash products? Um, I don't, I don't use them that much. I just find that they're a little bit thicker. Mm. Like I think the, for the, well, actually they're, they're not bad. I've tried acrylic washes. I, I just it's it's a personal preference. Yeah. I, I prefer oil based. And I just I, I just find I, I find yeah I, I find the oil based stuff just flows better. Mm. Not to say that they're not bad uh, for other modelers, but we all have our preferences. Exactly. So here I'm just touching. I'm just letting the capillary action just kind of pull. It's looking good. Yeah. So we'll let that we'll let that dry for a bit, and then we'll come back and clean up what we did on the turret and what we did here. Okay. We've let the wash dry enough, where now we can start to come in and clean it up. 
So what I do is I have a pool, a pool just a small little puddle of clean uh, enamel thinner, and I use the uh, I use the odorless thinner. And then what I'll do is I'll start just cleaning up, just with a dabbing motion, just to clean up the excess bits of wash. And you're continually reloading the brush and then so here's where the control comes in where you can really really come in and just really control where you want that wash around this, this lovely well detail on the top of this hatch and if you take too much off, you can come back and put more on. So you can see how easy it is to clean up after the fact. Let's just start attacking some of this bolt detail back here. Let's clean the brush. Let's bring this a little bit closer. So you want your, when you're doing this, you want your brush just barely wet, or not, not wet, just you, you kind of unload as much of the thinner as possible. So what I'll do is I'll just clean up the top of the bolt, just so the, to take the dark color off the top of the bolts here, just so that they pop a little bit more. Again, I find this is where things really start to pop on the build. And we have this. Another thing you can do too is you can take a makeup sponge and just start wiping things off. But using the makeup sponge is it's a little bit uncontrolled. So here I'm just cleaning up the well detail, and then I'll use the makeup sponge just to help help with the cleanup efforts. You can see here there's a little bit of overspill on the side, so just go in there and clean that up. And then I'll use the makeup sponge just to. And again, if you wanted to incorporate a streak, you could. We'll come back and we'll, we'll deal with that that oil paint, oil brush or paint there on the reinforcement panel. Let's we'll continue cleaning up along the top here. And you have all this nice All this nice bolt detail up here, like on this, I guess this is the armor cover for an extractor fan. I'm assuming, and there's a lot of nice bolt detail on that. So again, I clean, like just, even if you just start by cleaning the tops of the bolts, just so that they kind of stand out from the wash that's surrounding the base of the bolt. with the sponge, there you go. 
So you see how that's all nice, that's cleaned up. Now let's attack this one here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just take, just clean the top of the bolt just so it stands out. And then we'll start attacking the excess wash along the base. And it's just a dabbing motion I use with the brush here, just to pull some of the wash away and just clean it up. And I'll do the same thing on this one, just clean the top of that bolt off. And then, and then start just cleaning up the base of it. And again, just with a, a stippling motion, right? Just very gradual. Just blend it in. Go back and redo some of these guys. back to the front, we'll just clean up some of this weld detail. And we can use the sponge just to pull off the excess. And again, it's just, you're, you're kind of just going back and forth between the paintbrush and the sponge. Just a stippling motion. Just to clean up. And we can use. And you can get different different shapes and sizes of makeup sponges. I just kind of steal whatever. Carolyn has in her drawer, and I can cut them to shape or whatnot. She's good, she doesn't mind. There we go. So we'll just clean up. Clean up the sides here. Again, we'll come back and do that reinforcing band. And you're just kind of cleaning up. Again, you can see there's actually excess wash here. So we'll just take that slightly damp paintbrush and just kind of clean it up and then just remove with the sponge. Here we go. And it's very, it's a very gradual thing. Like it's just, like you're just kind of working it until you're happy. And again, if you take too much off, you can come back and reapply. It's not, not a problem. And I'm just kind of, you know, I'm not, I'll just move from area to area. There's no, there's no prescription to this. You just kind of, You know, just until things look right to your eye. And the nice thing about using oils is that there is, you know, you have that extra time to work with it. You know, we were kind of talking earlier about acrylic washes versus oil. I mean, that's the one nice thing about an oil wash is just that, you know, you have time to play with it. You have time to work it and adjust it and correct it and and, then, and again this is just one step of the weathering process right we're gonna uh, like probably the next step is that we'll, we'll start working with the uh, the AK pencils because I really like using the pencils as a way of uh, you know adding tonal variation to uh, 
you know, through these horizontal surfaces. They work good on vertical surfaces too, but. But this is just one step of the weathering process. Let's go, let's go here and start paying attention to You can see just gradually cleaning things up just with a bit of a stippling motion. That's all you do here. And again, it's, you know, practice, 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 practice. And then what I, what I might do here is again, with, with this, I might try and create a bit of a streak. Oh, it's a little bit dry. Let's add some more thinner. I can just kind of clean the tops of the bolts, but this is a lot of, and we'll it will come, you know, we'll do some streaking and, you know, maybe add a rust streak or. A, I mean, this, I mean, you would you would figure that, dirt and grime would accumulate on this ledge here of this of this viewport. So that's a perfect opportunity to add some streaking. We'll do that. We'll do that subsequently. And this is, I'm assuming this is an armored pistol port. Again, I should really check my references, but I believe that's what that is. And then just dabbing, just to pull up the excess. And then, and then we can kind of pull it down. So I think it looks good. Now we'll attack the bolts on the front of the mantle here. So this surface here is something that we might come back at with some pencils, probably in the next episode, I'm thinking. Or we start adding the streaking and whatnot, and, and maybe, like this is a good opportunity where there might be a bit of a natural shadow in here, and you can, I mean, you can do that the same thing, you know, I mean, you can do that the same thing with here with the oil, the oil brush or paint, but it's a, you know, I'll show you how to use the, uh, the pencils. And the pencils are good because they're water-based. And they, and they dry pretty quick. And you can reactivate with water. So you get kind of the, you kind of get the best of both worlds there where you have the, you know, the, the kind of the long working time of an oil, but it's a, it's a less harsh medium. So here, like there's a lot, like I put a lot of wash because there's there's a lot of shadow. And I really want, I really want these bolts to stand out and just the prominent feature that you want to kind of accentuate. And I'll keep working that in here. And this is a this is a good one where you can get the oil brush or the sorry the not the oil brush the makeup sponge in here and just kind of clean it up and pull it down. That was good. Again, I think we'll come at this with some pencils. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the pencils. I really, I think they're a nice, easy add. And in some cases, they're a good either replacement or a good supplement to oils. Yeah, so the lights in the studio here, it's a little hard to tell if it's if there's extra wash or it's just a shadow. I think it's just a shadow. Oh, let's do the rear and then we'll come back and we'll do the reinforcing panel. So here I'm just clean again, just cleaning up tops of the bolts. And you gotta be careful because you have that gun 
machine gun back here. So I want to make sure that as you're cleaning up, you're staying clear of that. And this is, I mean, this is a resin piece with a brass barrel add-on. So you don't want to... Actually, if there was an easy way of leaving this off and adding this after, I would have, but there isn't, so that's why it's on there. Because that's, that's just waiting to get snapped off. I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet, but hopefully we'll, be, we'll get lucky. We won't. And again, here, here's another good area where we can use the pencils to kind of add some depth and shadow. And yeah, it's a layering process. You're just kind of working through. Let's clean up that, that weld seam a bit. Clean up that bolt detail a bit. That looks pretty good. I think everything... Oh, yeah, we forgot the... This stuff here. Now this is kind of in the shadow area, so it's hard to uh, hard to see the wash, which is fine. And this might be a good candidate for dry brushing. Like we might actually dry brush this later on. That's good. Again, you can see there's a bit of a chip on the end here exposing oh, the back. Actually, another good use for using the pledge or the future is as a, you, you put that on a metal part and it helps the paint on top of it stick to it. I didn't do that here, I should have done that. But that's another good use for those paint, or for that, uh, for that pledge. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with everything. Uh, now let's go and attack this. So what I'm trying to do here is just create a little bit of shadow just to accentuate this reinforcing band. Uh, and I, I, I kind of put in a fairly th thick amount of, of oil paint. Um, and, and this is kind of the effect I'm going for. So this is what I did on this side. So this is where it kind of ends up. Uh, and this is what it looks like before that. So we'll take some... And you can see, I'm just... Again, with the stippling motion, I'm just pulling away oil paint and then I'll go in. because there's a lot here I'm going to be going to the thinner a little bit more and you just kind of we'll do one side and go back and do the other you can see already how this is our just just with that little bit it's already kind of cleaned up and then you just get a little bit tighter And then you just clean it up. So you can see I'm just pulling it down. Now this other side has a lot on it. So let's first, let's clean the surface of the band itself. That was a pretty thick application, but not to worry. We can come back and we can recover from just about anything. Short of dropping a model and, and having it smash into 100 pieces on the floor, you can recover from just about anything. Now what I've done accidentally is I've pulled off, in cleaning this horizontal band, I've, I've pulled off some of the old, so let's go back and add. We'll add some oil paint there. So we'll let that dry while I go and attack the other side. So again, you can, you know, back and forth, you can certainly recover. There's a lot of paint here. I, I really, you really just need like a pencil line, like a very thin line of paint. But there's, I 
If you can see already, it's starting to clean up. And in doing this, I noticed that there's a nice bit of weld detail that's part of the kit uh, on this band. So nice job to Mia. And again, just so just you keep going at it and keep taking oil paint away until you're happy with the effect. So it's starting to get there. Let's go back and fix the other side that we messed up. Oh, somebody's hungry. That somebody would be me. And again, you're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna put streaking and whatnot here. And you can see how the, you know, the as I'm cleaning this up, the, you can, the, there's a bit of almost like a bit of a filter on the white, the 731 here, which is a nice effect. That's okay. Again, we're gonna go at that with some with some streaking grime, probably, in another episode, in the next episode. There we go. Now let's go back and fix the other side, or keep attacking the other side. There's a lot of paint, but that's okay. So you can certainly recover from that. There you go. Now we, this is where the sponge can come in. You can just kind of pull away. I said it comes in different so this is kind of the centerpiece but there's nice pointy ends to it and you can kind of use that just to, so I'm just going to hit the, the surface of that reinforcing band just to clean it off and then just a more targeted there. so I think we'll clean it up a little bit more but you can see it already looks, and you know, we're kind of uh, almost there with it. So what I might do is I might hit this with a hairdryer just to get it to dry, and then we'll kind of attack it with a sponge. But there, almost. Still a little bit of work to do, but a lot better than it was initially. So we'll let that dry. Now let's let's go to the bits we did on the. So again, here we use the, uh, so this wasn't the out of the bottle wash, this was kind of the diluted uh, oil brusher. So here, let's see what this. So very, so very quickly with, with the makeup sponge, I've cleaned up Okay, so we're just going to carry on cleaning up there we go so what I'll do here and I kind of did it on this one off camera is I'll just just kind of clean up a little bit and then use the sponge just to clean it up 
And I have to say, I really like, I really like the effect of the using the oil, the thin down, mig oil brush. Let's go back and just clean that other. All you're doing is you're just kind of cleaning up the horizontal surfaces and then looks pretty good. I think I think that's gonna be my go-to wash method now. Again, you can. I mean, you can always. The other the out of the bottle stuff is good, but I think some of the stuff I have is pretty old. Like that AK wash, I think is probably a good five, six, seven years old. There, yeah, looks good. Let's go back and. So I find with washes, you, having a sponge is essential. Well, essential. It, it, just, it helps speed things along. Otherwise, if you're just relying on pulling stuff up with a brush, it might take you a little bit longer. And anything that saves time is not a bad thing. Especially if you're like if you're building for a deadline of some, whether it's you know you want to get something ready for a show or if you're like me you're trying to trying to have something ready on a weekly basis so that we can we can shoot these videos. Any little shortcut you can get helps. So again, just cleaning up the front here. And you can kind of, um, like on this here, I kind of left some of the oil, like I didn't clean this perfectly. I left this as a bit of a, you know, kind of a wash or, um, you know, to create some tonal effects. So I'll leave that the way it is. Again, you, when you do these things, you kind of have these, you know, you have the option of, you know, if you like an effect, you can kind of leave it in place, even though it wasn't what you were going for at the time. So if we start attacking this and just wet it a bit, and then if you go attack it with the sponge, what does that look like? It looks pretty good. But again, just a just a quick, easy shortcut. So I think we're done on this side, so let's go back. Now we've, um, we'll attack some of these. I don't know what these are, fuel caps or what these are. And, and you know, app, these are gonna get a lot of attention with like oil stains and after we, after we finish this wash part. Like these would be ideal candidates for just creating some different, you know, like spills and accumulation of dirt and oil around these caps, just so that they these will stand out from the from this base here. So it doesn't have to be perfect, 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 but and again, maybe this I'll come out with the sponge just to kind of dab things up and clean them up a bit. Easy. Again, you can see there's a bit of a chip here where the underlying brass is showing through. We'll come back and clean that up after. Not a problem. Again, I should have probably coated this in pledge. Lesson learned for next time. Okay. 
There we go. Nice, dirty. Okay, so I think we're done with the, uh, I think we're done with the washes for now. So what we'll do now is we'll get some, we'll just do one section here on camera. I'll just show you how to get some mud uh, into that, uh, into that section here on the side. And then we'll do some pigments. Okay, so now we're gonna apply some mud um, and and, to, we'll, and we'll just do one section, um, you know, somewhere to, and we'll try and replicate this here. And the reason why, so why do I use the mud? Why do I create this? Well, I think for two reasons. So one is to create a little bit of texture, just to simulate dirt. And like th these areas would get pretty uh, dirty as, you know, as the tank drove through mud and dirt and dust and whatnot, and everything would accumulate in there. And secondly, it provides um, a, a nice dark tone for the pigments to sit on top of. So you can see here, this is kind of the effect we're going for. And we'll add some to this. We'll do some speckling and whatnot on, on, on this here, but that's kind of what you're trying to get. And I like the, so here I'll kind of, like the front of the tank, I'll build up um, a little bit more. Like these sections here will be built up a little bit more and then there'll be a little bit less on these because here you'd have all of the dirt kicking up and maybe the same thing here as, you, as the tank went in. Uh, and then there might be a little bit less accumulation just to leave a little bit of the green uh, to show through and it's a nice contrast the green and the you know the kind of the earthy brown tones of the of the mud that we're going to put on as you can as you can see here it's a nice kind of diffused effect so simply when you what I use is a, I'll use this and you can use anything there's all kinds of textured mud products out there but this is something I've had for ages uh, and I still got a lot left as you can see and you know either Tamiya has their own range uh, you can get some stuff from from AK and MIG uh, you know, Vallejo has these pots. This is this is a good. Like this is twelve dollars at the time. I bought this maybe four or five years ago, uh, and there's all kinds left. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit out. I'll put it into a, a little palette, and I'll add just a bit of water to it, just to make it a little bit more workable. And then you start going in and just dabbing. into the corners and, and you're just trying to create again like I said you're creating like a nice textured base for the pigments to go on just to show the accumulation of previous dirt and mud and, and you just make sure you get like here I got a little bit on this is this is a mating surface here so here just to get an old brush to clean that off because if you don't that'll dry hard and it might interfere with the fitting of the road wheel there, so. And you're just dabbing, you're just getting underneath too. And you, and you, you know, get an old brush, cut it down. You can see this brush is pretty destroyed. But just cut it down, I'll do some on the front here. Just make sure you get it into all the nooks and crannies. Because that's where the mud would accumulate, right? It would be all the hard to reach blood. Once it's in there, it's not coming out. I'm just gonna get your brush and there's and there's a lot of there's a lot of intricate steering rods and, and whatnot here, so you're gonna be a little bit careful. But again, this is just, again, this is the first layer of many that's going to go on here in terms of weathering. This will create the base texture and give a nice dark brown foundation to things. Actually, to be fair, this could be a little darker. It would be even better, but we'll come back and create those effects with various washes and whatnot. Oil paints. So not to worry, the important thing here is really, in my mind, is really just the, the texturing, getting that dirt and whatnot going. Wow. 
Easy, easy, easy. And then, so, uh, so I think you're pretty much done there. So we'll let that dry. I think it's pretty much everywhere it needs to be. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Again, if you miss a few spots, you can always go back and touch up later on. And then, and then just do the rest. And so I'll do that off camera. Um, I don't think you need, you're not gonna pick up too much by watching me do the whole thing. So what we'll do as the last piece here is we'll go and we'll add some pigments and we'll do pigments on maybe this, this area here and replicate what we, uh, what we have here. Okay, so now we're gonna put pigment on the other side, which has the dried mud. So we'll do, and you, and you do panel by panel. Like the nice thing about here is like there's four different sections on each side. If you want to break things up. So again, what I do is I just take an old, this actually, this is a brush that comes like this, uh, sold by Gunzi. So that you can get, or, but you can take any old brush and just cut it down. And what I do is I just kind of stipple in the pigments to where the mud is. And you kind of and you kind of work to kind of respect the boundaries that you set with the mud in terms of how far up you go. Again, I mentioned before I want to keep some of the green on here. So now what I'll do is I've done this lower, I'll, I'll do the upper section separately. But now I go back to my trusty um, application bottle. And again, the, here is the Tamiya X20 thinner, which I use as a fixing agent. And I just just kind of touch a little bit. And just kind of let it Let the pigments kind of suck this in, and then we'll let that dry. So when you, uh, I find when you when you fix the pigments, it kind of it kind of reduces the effect. So we may we may want to go back subsequently. Like once this dries, we may want to go back and add some more and then do some more fixing. So let's do let's do the top portion here. So I didn't do the top portion in this section, so we can start back here. And here it might be best to maybe same type of thing just kind of stippling in so this does two one of two things that a it it gives you a lot more control instead of just dropping pigment here you're applying it where you want it And B, uh, it allows you to, you know, a little pigment goes a long way with this. And that's a bit more than I wanted. So I just blow some of it off. And then we'll kind of, sorry, Robert, let me just flip it that's around okay. this way so you can see. And then we'll just kind of finish this section off here and then we'll just do a little bit kind of bringing it down but again not covering the whole thing because I want some of that green to show through and again when you when you go to fix this this will all kind of get reduced And then I, the, the other nice thing about putting on the mud is it creates a textured surface for the pigment to grab into, which is, which is good. So let's, let's do, and you just need a little bit, just touch it. That's why this thing is so great. It's just, it just allows you to, I mean, you just kind of go until it, and then you kind of let it you know, go back and just hit the areas that were missed. There. So 
So we'll let that we'll let that dry. We may take a hair dryer to it to speed things up, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. So and see how okay, so now we've uh, we've let this dry, or actually we accelerated drying with a hair dryer, and and you can see that um, compared to what was on there initially, that the you know the act of fixing the pigment has kind of reduced it, um, and it's also created some kind of tide marks, almost, which is normal. This happens. So what I do is I just kind of blend in the tide marks. And what I'll do is I'll just take a like a just a tiny bit of pigment and with a stippling motion you just kind of get rid of those tide marks. Now they're not too pronounced here, which is good. And I might add a little bit of pigment to this area here. But overall, I think I'm pretty happy with the look. There's some nice variety. You can still see some of the original color, the, the textured mud color come through. Um, it's not heavy, it's subtle. Now this I won't go back and fix. I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it on the model like that. And the reason is, is that you're not going to you're not gonna. You're not gonna go in there and not. And then there's more effects we're gonna put in here, right? We're gonna maybe work with some of the pencils, create some staining. We'll do some splatter effects, and just kind of create, you know, just some random. Those kind of dust would just come down. I'll just color that. That looks pretty good. So what we might. So here. To, ac to accentuate this reinforcing band, we might darken this area here. And you can do that through, you know, oil paints might be a good option. You can use pencil. Again, we'll, we'll kind of work on that in the subsequent episode. But you can see how easy it is to build up, you know, a little bit of mud and whatnot. And, and if you get, you know, here are some of the road wheels that I've done. I'm just find one that I've actually finished. No, that's not one. There we go. So you can see, you know, the road wheels as they go on. And again, I didn't do the back, but always do the, you know, always do the back of your road wheels. Never let that go because that's a big no-no. You can see here that we'll have, you know, different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat each one of these road wheels as a separate thing. And Dave Brown taught me that. He said if you can take an area of the model, whether it's a road wheel or a hatch or an engine deck, something, a tool, and just treat it like its own, like a jack, treat it like its own separate model. And just, you know, work on it as if it's something onto itself and not part of the greater. So you can see here, here the intent is to have some variety in the amount of dirt and whatnot that's on these road wheels. So that they're not all the same; they'd be a little bit different, um, but they would kind of work within the context of the of the of the, of the overall effect you're looking for. So, um, so I think that pretty much does it for today's episode. When I what we'll do, what I'll work on next is kind of finishing all of this up on both sides uh, underneath. Uh, we'll finish applying uh, the washes to the rest of the model. And we'll get it to a point where we can start doing some layering effects with uh, pencils. Uh, so definitely the, the focus of the next episode will be using the new pencils uh, and working in some oil and some streaking and whatnot. So we'll kind of take that, that kind of the last phase of the weathering. Um, so we'll be almost done. And then I think we'll probably do a separate episode on the metal tracks. We'll be, we'll be, I'll be using frill tracks for this. Uh, and I think we'll be, pretty much, uh, we'll be pretty much done. Maybe one on the exhausts, how uh, we're going to do that. Uh, and then painting the tools and whatnot, but uh, yeah, we're well on our way in terms of uh, uh, getting to the end of this. So um, yeah, so until next time, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope uh, I hope this was helpful in some way, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you next time. Thanks everybody. Take care.